Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue in our journey towards Lent today, speaking again about the sorrows of glorious Saint Joseph. A few weeks ago, we reached the fourth sorrow. Today, we have the fifth sorrow, and this is in preparation for this magnificent feast we have this Friday, March 19th, of our glorious patron. So we journey on this fifth sorrow. This is the flight into Egypt. Joseph with the child and his mother in the darkness of the night, in the depth of winter, leave to escape the persecution raised by King Herod against the adorable infant child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Remember, we spoke at length before about the infused knowledge of Our Lady. Our Lady foresaw this flight, as we read in the mystical account of Venerable Mary of Agredia. She foresaw in the vision what would be inflicted upon the infant God. Shedding many tears, then after the presentation in the temple, but without manifesting her sorrow to her spouse, Joseph. Joseph, in fact, thought that the sorrow of Our Lady was as a response to the prophecy of Simeon. He was most troubled to see Our Lady with sorrow, but Our Lady never manifested anything to him. This is the first part of his sorrow. The disturbance of his soul was one of the reasons then why the holy angels spoke to him, as you read in the scripture, and says, Arise, take the child and his mother, and fly to Egypt. There shalt thou remain until I shall return to give thee other advice. For Herod is seeking after the child in order to take away his life. Immediately then, this is the prompt obedience we learn today, especially St. Joseph. Immediately, the Holy Spouse rose full of sorrow, foreseeing also that of his love, most loving spouse. So gathering his poor clothing into a casket and loading it on a beast of burden, which they had brought from Nazareth, they departed shortly at midnight, straight away and hastened without delay on their journey to Egypt. Can you imagine the sorrow then going into a place full of idolatry and full of paganism and departing from one's loved ones? The Queen of Heaven knew of the design to murder the children, but she did not tell Saint Joseph of this at the time. It must be also remembered that the Almighty permitted his only begotten son with his most Holy Mother, Mary and Saint Joseph to suffer many, many inconveniences and hardships on the way in connection with this travel through the desert. Although the Heavenly Lady made no complaints, yet she was much afflicted and also was the sorrows of Saint Joseph. For both of them suffered many personal inconveniences and discomforts while the mother, in addition thereto, was afflicted on the account of the sufferings felt now by her son, baby Jesus, and Joseph. Imagine baby Jesus, not even 50 days old, the mother carrying him through the desert in the cold of the night and the absolute blinding heat of the day. During all of this journey, 180 miles through the desert, they had no other night shelter than the sky and open air. It was the time of winter for this journey took place in the month of February, only six days after the purification in the temple. In order to furnish them with some kind of shelter against the open air, however narrow and humble it might be, Saint Joseph formed a sort of tent for the divine word and most holy Mary by means of his cloak, his own cloak, and some sticks. Saint Joseph even slept on the ground, resting his head upon a chest which contained the clothing and other articles of the baggage. They pursued their journey 
and they had very, very little sustenance and food to eat. Some bread and some fruit, which was soon eaten. Joseph was concerned about this privation. She says of Greta on one of the days that the holy couple never even had anything to eat until nine o'clock at night. The Lord the Most High permitted these inconveniences and also the elements to afflict them, causing them sufferings with fatigue, destitution, and hunger. This is the sorrow of Saint Joseph. For there arose a storm of wind and rain which harassed and blinded them by its fury. The hardship grieved more tenderheartedly the mother and Saint Joseph because we said the child, baby Jesus, was net, not yet 50 days old. They were in want of food, but the Lord allowed them in his providence to fall into this need. What about this second great suffering of Saint Joseph and Our Lady, the cry of the innocents? Scarcely had the Holy Family left the confines of Bethlehem when the cries and shrieks began to rend the air. Herod, furious, we know had been deceived by the Magi, had sent forth his cruel order. The troops of soldiers entered to Bethlehem and with drawn swords in their hands, burst into every house and butchered all the male infants, tearing them from their cradles and from their distracted mothers, whose screams filled the city and every household with consternation. Whoever attempted resistance was slain. Concealment was the only resource for the unhappy women. But where and how to conceal their babies, whose innocent cries even betrayed their hiding places? They knew not how to be silent. They knew not how to be silent, says St. Augustine, because as yet they knew not how to fear. From Bethlehem, the carnage spread to the surrounding villages. The ground reeked with blood and was strewn with the mangled corpses of these innocents. And the whole country was filled with desolation then and mourning. Then, says St. Matthew, was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah the prophet saying, a voice in Ramah was heard in lamentation and great mourning. Rachel bewailing her children who would not be comforted because they are not. Herod's cruel order was limited to children who were not above two years of age, but many others perished beyond this. The male children alone were put to the victims of this fury, but how many female infants may have been mexicans slaughtered? How many mothers were slain by the same sword that pierced the babies lying on their breasts? How many fathers and brothers casting themselves between the children and the armed soldiers to protect them mingled their blood with that of these martyred innocents? This is the sorrow of Saint Joseph to know this was happening. What was the number of the slaughtered babies? We know not. Some of the ancient doctors extend it to an amount which would seem incredible. The Greeks and Abyssinian, Abyssinians in their liturgy have retained the number of 14,000, but the Holy Roman Catholic Church, in the absence of any precise statement in scripture or tradition, simply says that Herod, and rage slew many, many children. These were true martyrs of the new law because they died for Jesus Christ our Savior. And martyrdom consists not in the pain of death, but in its cause. The church indeed addresses them as the flowers of the martyrs, because in the opening of life, the fierce persecutors of Christ cut them off as budding roses. They were also the first to shed the blood for Christ. And the saying this offers no contradiction to the assertion that Saint Stephen was the protomartyr of the new law, since he was the first of the holy martyrs who, after the passion of our Lord, confessed the faith by both word and deed, but the holy innocents confessed their faith, not with their tongues, but by their death. 
which was to them a baptism of blood as we know. Mary, the Virgin Mary, saw all these things and we can understand that this was a deep sorrow, as we said, for Saint Joseph. Compassionate Saint Joseph then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ today, on this fifth sorrow as he takes flight into Egypt with the greatest ever treasures to exist in creation, baby Jesus and Mary. And in the slaughter of these innocent little ones, compassionate Saint Joseph. Ask today upon his protection in your life always to save us from ourselves, our pride, our ego, and our sins. Do not ever forget the power of this magnificent patron. Look to imitate this blind obedience today. In spite of the sorrows, in thinking of leaving all his family and relations to go into this unknown pagan country of idolatry, Egypt, follow his obedience. Let Joseph, glorious Saint Joseph, be your spiritual father so that he will present you to his most sweet spouse, Mary, your spiritual mother, who will in turn present you to Jesus Christ, the most perfect redeemer of mankind, for your heavenly reward, amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,